The sun doesn't shine on you more or the rain soaks you less just because you are a woman. This equality of nature has been personified by our mentor, Captain Dilip Tonde. When I first stepped into the boat, he told me to leave my gender outside. The circumnavigation of the globe by six women has been hailed as the victory of women. It's been the posture model of the women empowerment mission in the country. While it's to our fortune to be able to be part of such a progressive mission. But the words women or gender was nowhere in our mind all throughout the conception, the training, or the execution of circumnavigation. Before I tell you all about the circumnavigation, let me, let me transport you to the windy morning of 15 September 2017. It was in the middle of the ocean, I would tell you which one. But suffice to say, it was blue all around. The wind and the wave was putting the boat into a steady yet unnerving rolling motion. We were a speck of white in a sea of blue. But despite the loneliness around, there was a fair chance that we may collide with any stray fishing vessel or any other kind of boat. So much like other seafarers of the world, we also had to maintain a shift, watches as they are called, to make sure night or day, come what may, there is one of us always looking out. It, is very, it was mandatory for us to keep our boats safe, as the saying goes. You keep the boat safe, and the boat will keep you safe. So on that day, just shy of waking up for my 4 to 8 AM watch, one could say that I was sleeping in my home, in my bed, in my bedroom, when my friend Ashwarya came to wake me up quite eagerly, I might add. I just woke up quickly, freshened up, checked the boat's position, and there I was in my office. Lo and behold, it was my office. As the day passed by, I had certain set of chores to do. Even at, out at the sea, we need to cook food, we need to clean our clothes, we need to clean up etc., etc. So preparing breakfast that day was my duty. So at 08.00 hours, I found myself in front of the cooktop. But quite typical of any household, you might say. Well, not quite so. The rocking motion of the boat meant that the chef and the food to be cooked had to be guarded against falling off. The boat builder, though had taken care of the later by installing a jimble cooktop, but what about me, the chef? So I pulled out one harness, tied myself to a hard point, and went ahead with my work. And eventually, I must tell you that cutting something as small as cutting vegetables on board was a Herculean task. Later, as the day passed, I did my, all my chores for the day. Maintenance work was done. It was, I watched some movies and had my lunch. It was again time for my evening watch, which started from 1,600 hours to 2,000 hours. At, at about somewhere 2030, it was time for me to go to bed. I was scrolling through my phone, checking which, by the way, was, was without any connectivity. I came across this app, Activity. And to my surprise, since morning, I had walked only 36 steps. 
It wasn't the fault of the phone or the app. It was the size of the boat. 56 feet, 15 meters was where I had spent nine months of my life with five others. It was a difficult expedition, but just like every successful expedition in this world was made possible with a dollop of hard work and training, a tablespoon of good wishes and a pinch of luck. As far as the training goes, we at Armed Forces take it very seriously. So when the question of training us came up, Navy wanted the best. Therefore, they appointed Captain Dilip Donde, Shore Chakra, and the first Indian who went around the globe solo on a sailboat as our mentor. Since all of us, all six of us, were novices, we were from different cadres in Indian Navy, nobody had any clue about ocean sailing. So we had to be trained from the very beginning. Our initial training, which was the basics of sailing, started, which went on for one, one and a half month. And thereafter, we graduated to the theoretical part of the training, wherein we learned about navigation, communication, signals, semanship, first aid, and meteorology. But eventually, it was the time for the actual hands-on training under Captain Dilip Donde on board INSV Tarini and later on INSV Madai. For any ocean passage, it is mandatory for one to know how to sail a boat. But more than that, it is prime for the person to know how to repair and cannibalize things in the middle of ocean where standing itself is a challenge. So during the training phase, we had covered approximately 25,000 nautical miles, which is approximately equal to 50,000 kilometers, way more than the circumference of the Earth. We have sailed from Goa to Karwar, Cochin, Vishakhapatnam, Porbandar, Port Blair, Mumbai, twice to Mauritius, and Cape Town. But I've been talking about circumnavigation for quite some time now. But what exactly is circumnavigation? May I going around the world under sails mean circumnavigation? Or are there certain rules to it? So the answer to that is yes. There are certain rules for a round the world voyage to be called as circumnavigation. You have to cross cover a distance of approximately 21,600 nautical miles, which is the circumference of the Earth. You have to cross equator twice. You have to go south of all the three great capes, which are Cape Leuven, Cape of Good Hope, Cape Horn. And also, you have to start and finish from the same pole. You cannot take any external assistance and also cannot make use of any secondary means of propulsion apart from the wind. So finally, on 10th of September 2017, we were flagged off from the shores of River Mandavi in Goa by Honorable Raksha Mantri, Srimati Nirmala Sita Raman. The first port of call for us was Fremantle in Australia. The straight distance to Fremantle was 5,500 nautical miles. We anticipated to cover it in 40 days, but due to post-monsoon seasons in an Indian Ocean region, it took a little bit longer. As a result, we started running out of water, as the water carrying capacity of our boat was only 600 liters. And on top of that, our reverse osmosis plant gave up. Luckily for us, it rained. We did some rainwater harvesting, and finally arrived Fremantle with a lesson that we had to start rushing since the day one. The halls were normally because of the reason of the constraints of our boat to store rations and the minor repairs that we had to undertake. From Fremantle, the next leg was for Littleton in New Zealand. It was the shortest of them all, but we had to go through some of the most notorious waters, 
the Great Australian Bay, and the Tasman Sea. But luckily for us, there was an unexpected high that had formed over the region, because of which we got the just the right amount of wind to propel through it all. We crossed the, our very first Great Cape, which was Cape Leeuwin in Western Australia. And this was definitely the most scenic leg of the entire circumnavigation, as we got to witness the Southern Lights, Aurora Australis, saw a lots and lots of schools of dolphins, whales, okras, sharks, and finally, we arrived New Zealand. From New Zealand, next leg was to Falkland Islands, a very small country across the South Pacific. So now we were below 40 degrees south, the temperatures were also very low, and this was definitely the most difficult leg in the entire circumnavigation. Because below 40 degrees south, there is hardly any landmass. So we had this entire leg in one go. So the in, in the in very initial part, we had covered the international date line and relived the day. And just shy of crossing the Cape Horn, we got into a hurricane force storm. And the, in that storm, the winds were as high as 70 knots. And 70 knots is equivalent to 140 kilometers per hour. And the sea was as high as 9 meters. To put into perspective, a 9 meters is equivalent to a three-story building. So we somehow managed to survive that storm. And I would say managed to survive because you cannot really battle nature. And after 20 hours of that survival, the sunrise that I saw that day was probably the best sunrise I have seen till date. We crossed the Cape Horn, also known as the Everest of seafarers, and also the graveyard of seafarers. And by now, we knew why. And finally, we arrived in the Falkland Islands, a very small country of only 3,500 people. And thereafter, from Falkland Islands, the next leg was to Cape Town in South Africa. This was yet another difficult phase, since we were going to cross the South Atlantic Ocean, which is again very volatile. But there was a good thing in this leg that now we were moving towards north. And as, we, as you move towards north, the temperature were going to increase gradually, though. We got uh, somewhere around 35 to 40 knots of wind in this entire passage, crossed the prime meridian, and arrived Cape Town on the day of Holi. That was the only festival that we had celebrated on land in the entire nine months of circumnavigation. From Cape Town, we were very happy since it was the home run now. We anticipated to reach India in the next 45 days. But as the saying goes, man proposes, God disposes. Just ahead of Mauritius, when we were already dreaming about our home, the most unexpected thing happened. Our steering gear system broke down. The only system without any redundancies. But when you are on your own, at that time, you rather think of a solution than panic. So the brainstorming started. Everybody came up with some or other idea. And after eight hours of serious brainstorming, one idea actually worked. And we were able to rectify one of the steering gears. But with 4,000 kilometers ahead of us to India, and April and May being the monsoon season in Indian Ocean region, we thought it was better for us to head, to, head towards Mauritius and carry out the mandatory repair. Post the mandatory repair, we resumed our journey towards India. And finally, we were on the shores of River Mandavi. We could see close to our destination, we could see people on the jetty of INS Mandavi cheering at us in the naval fighter aircraft doing a fly past over us. 
and the defense minister herself standing over there to welcome us. But in between this whole thing, there was a sinking feeling because the goal towards which we were working for last three years, working, not just working, working very, very hard, was about to get over. As they say, success is a journey, not the destination. With that, I would like to conclude, hoping that life has many, many, many more such journeys to offer. Thank you.